Let's start, though, on the border in that thing called Title 42. That's the pandemic era rule that allowed the United States to immediately expel all immigrants for public health reasons. Well, Title 42 ends on Thursday, and this week, El Paso is bracing for a wave of migrants potentially coming across the Rio Grande. Congressman Keith Self is our first guest. He is a Republican who represents Collin and Hunt counties in North Texas. Congressman Self, welcome back to the program. Uh, the expiration of Title 42 is this coming Thursday, May the 11th. El Paso declared a state of emergency. President Biden sending 1,500 soldiers uh, down to the border. What do you expect we're realistically going to see? Well, if uh, what we're hearing is correct, we're going to see a flood of immigrants taking advantage of this latest expiration of Title 42, which allows us to uh, keep them out of the country because of uh, the COVID emergency. Republicans have criticized the president, obviously, over his approach to the border. We've seen the numbers go up. Uh, so some of that criticism probably rightfully do. But sending 1,500 soldiers to the border is something we haven't seen from President Biden before. What do you think about that effort? Well, I think that they're going to go down there to do administrative duty. So they're going to go down there armed with pencils and pens. Uh, hopefully that will relieve some border agents to do their job. But from what I've heard in my trips to the border is that the border agents are handcuffed anyway. Uh, so I see this as a PR move. This is a move to uh, show the public that we're doing something. But remember, I, the way I understand it, these folks are these soldiers are going to be doing administrative duties uh, which do nothing to help secure the border. How are the Border Patrol agents handcuffed? Uh, well, for instance, in the El Paso sector, when I was there, they said that they really did not chase people that ran from them. Because if a man running falls down, breaks his nose, the agent is held responsible. If you're chasing a car and the car happens to wreck, the agent could be held responsible. Now, that deters border agents from doing their job to aggressively uh, detain illegal immigrants. Congressman, one of your colleagues was on our program uh, last week. He's from Texas, and he said that he's going to start working on uh, legal pathways to immigration. I'm just curious whether you think there's an appetite for that in the Republican-led House right now. And I don't think in the Republican Congress, Congress, until we see action on illegal immigration, that we're, there's going to be a lot of appetite to deal with the very real issues we have with legal immigration. Uh, because we've we've seen President Reagan uh, fall for that once. I don't think we're going to do it again. Congressman, you sent a uh, letter to the president along with 30 other members you had signed it as well, saying that a proposed rule to uh, cut back on greenhouse gases over the next day, cut them in half, more than half, that that's going to have, uh, you said, devastating consequences for manufacturers and for consumers. The problem you pointed out is really the batteries because people are going to be in electric vehicles if they're not in auto, uh, you know, automobiles powered by gasoline. Uh, this is a feel-good policy uh, that is going to allow the wealthy progressive progressives to feel good about their electric vehicles. But most of the electricity, even in their electric vehicles, will be produced by fossil fuels. Uh, they only store energy; they don't produce energy. In fact, this is going to increase pollution uh, and expense for people across the board with, with their car buying. Did you hear back from the administration? No, not yet. I'll have to wait and see. Congressman, we appreciate the time. Thank you so much, Jason, for having me. Appreciate it.